Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 134th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information Even about you, this Greenland. at BIPCOT.org. So we are back. I am Jeremy, joined most of the time by Dave and Andre, who are here both this week. <laughs> uh, after Yeah. Uh, well, Andre was out last week, but he at least was nice enough to call us ahead of time, uh, whereas Dave just forgot about us the previous week. But we're all back together again. <laughs> and this week, we have a returning guest, our friend Nick Hazelton, uh, formerly, I guess, hey. the, the anarcho yakinalist but now the, <laughs> yeah. the host of Yakin' with Nick. He's What's going he's on, Nick? He's still the anarcho yakinalist to me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I still consider myself an anarcho yakinalist <laughs> well, I hope so. The one and only, really. I mean, right. unless you want to count like some guys in igloos somewhere, yak list. <laughs> <laughs> there might be. I don't know. I don't think th there might be some uh, some anarchists in Tibet or Mongolia. I bet there is. Well, I mean, is there is there really there any other be. kind of anarchist to be aside from an anarcho yakitalist? I mean, let's question. be honest. Let's be honest here. That's the only real anarchy there is. I'm raising yeah, yaks. I, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's somebody out there that's like allergic to yak hair that's cursing you out right now, Andre, going, I want to be an like, anarcho yak list. I, <laughs> I don't care. Purity spiral. It'll kill me. Purity spiral. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're not a real anarchist until you raise yaks. That's, you heard it here first. That's right. Or at least raise something. <laughs> Cameron. <laughs> Fire up the work camps. <laughs> I, 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 I like to raise yaks, but I, I want to. I, I need to be in warmer climates because of my because of my family. So that's why I'm going to do the bison thing. Hopefully, one day, eventually. Still working on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bison he do a lot better from his with the nor'easter uh, prone. Ne never mind. So. <laughs> in the Midwest and in the South, it's pretty hard to raise yaks. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of issues there, uh, just uh, particularly humidity. Uh, yeah, I can imagine here. because most of them are most of them are their natural climate is very very dry, right? Yeah, yeah, up in the mountains. Yeah, I was gonna say dry, Frigid. cold, and way up in the air. So <laughs> putting them, putting them in the flatlands of the of of good old the good old USSA probably isn't the best for most of them. Yeah, well, yeah, da damn. Since we're on yaks, how how's it been going? Have, have uh, has the herd expanded? What's the deal? Give everyone the yeah. skinny. Last time you were on here, I think you had three or two, and oh, we're geez. going to purchase a third one. Well, I probably had three, um, and I was okay. um, wow. Yeah, maybe maybe I did have two at the time. I don't remember. I think I it, no. Nah, I've always had about three or four. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Um, I have thirty now. Oh, well, I guess they're not all of them are not mine, uh, but the herd uh, I share a herd, and it's you know seventy five percent of it is mine, um, and there's thirty. Wow, uh, that's not good. I, Lord, I own about that's a lot of livestock. Bravo, that's uh, that's a nice, yeah. if not year and a half or at least a year expansion, man. That's pretty, pretty. That's a yeah. That's impressive. That's impressive. Thank you. Yeah, we we've done a lot of work with uh, with bringing more on. Um, we started out with uh, two bulls and two yak or two cows and uh and uh, you know they they've had calves and then uh bought more and then the ones that we've bought had calves and now uh, i'm getting to the point where i don't think any of my calves born here have have had any calves yet but coming up here soon um i'll have uh i'll have my third generation on the farm which is uh which is pretty so crazy. when are we going to start that, yak coin that that is no <laughs> second question. i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> That, that well, well, let's get back to that in a second. I was just gonna say that 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 is crazy, man. I mean, I mean, it's great for you, and I'm 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 happy to hear that. I mean, I knew you had been adding some. I didn't realize it had gotten that big, but I mean, just the fact that yeah, the fact that you're you're about yeah, that's to a hit, massive explosion. Yeah, the the fact that you're about to hit your third generation. You're what? You're only 19 now. If that, have you hit 19 yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like that's just that's when insane. did you start this again? Um, I were think 14, right? I think I was 15 when I had the Yanks. Yeah. So you got a five yeah, year so timeline. You're already on your 30, you're already at 30 herd. So that's pretty wild, man. That's, that's a 10 times explosion, essentially a 10. 
they've, tons they've, expansion they've, they've within done, five years. That's massive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not but, good at math, but no, that's it, that's massive within that that amount of short amount of years, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, it, some of them aren't mine, right? So that's held. So I have somebody else. I, mean, I, I get board that, but them still, seventy five percent are yours. R- right. So we yeah, we've had it quite a bit, and uh, you know, I, I haven't. I'm, I may have paid off the yeah, because I haven't paid off all of the infrastructure for the farm mm-hmm. um but you know i i had to take some loans from my parents to buy them but uh it's i think this is where right 30 yaks so is about well, it, what right? i want to have yeah that's right <laughs> i uh i got a small I got loan of five yaks from my parents and <laughs> that's <literally>. right <laughs> so you're saying, but, you're, uh, you're saying 30 is where you wanted to max out somewhere around there yeah, well, I don't know how much my pasture can handle. It, it's looking like I can handle more, um, but I'm hoping that's what uh, that's that's Same like right way. about now is where they're going to uh, they're they're starting to populate. Like I have to buy yaks to butcher um, still. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I'm raising out calves from other people, um, but I'm getting to the point now where I'm I'm only raising my own. Um, I think next year. I might be able to only slaughter my own calves, but wow, it'll, that'd I'll be probably great. have to buy more. Oh, wow. That's, dude. That's incredible. You hit the five years. You're going to you be self-sustaining five... here in five years. Yeah. Wow. Coming up. Dude. Close to it. We'll see. <laughs> All right. So I, I think the that segue my market will expand. Into... Well, no. So have Sorry. you heard of Joel Saladin? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen how he paddocks up the, the cows? Mm-hmm. With the... He moves them almost daily. Yeah, yeah. He's got the electric. Have, have fence. you done or tried that with with yaks yet? I, I've tried it a little bit, and uh, I've had success with smaller numbers with the the size of paddocks mm-hmm. I had. But as the herd got bigger, I, I couldn't fit them in the space that uh, I had the fencing for. So um, l- luckily, I had a I had a larger pasture, but I don't have paddocks in it right now. But it's my goal to start sectioning off that that pasture into making smaller areas because it is it, it's a lot more efficient on growing grass and it's uh it's good for those animals to to rotate my mind's been blown with it since uh he had an eighth they said there was a eighth uh, a grass that was dead for eight thousand years come back on his pasture just wow. from the way he was grazing yeah and they were like we had we thought this was extinct yada yada that's yada crazy. they took that's crazy so like <laughs> I, you know, the paddock thing has blown my mind since I've seen it. And I, I, I've been waiting as soon as Jeremy said you were on, I was like, I've got to write this down. I've got to talk to him about it because it's so amazing. Yeah. It, it's, it's pretty cool. You can, especially look with at, you. sorry, but no, I think there might be a little bit of delay with this, but, um, no, Dave, just, but yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> whatever, that's fine. Um, but, but the pastures, if you look at like, I don't know, you look at BLM ground or something that's just hardly ever touched grasslands. And then you compare uh, Joel Salatin's fields. There's there's probably a lot more diversity. There's probably a lot more, you know, diversity of life. And there's probably, uh, it's going to be a lot greener than pasture that just isn't touched. Uh, it's There's a lot yeah. more life when you're able to manage it like that because um, it's just optimal for the growth of that grass. Um, you're not wearing it down and it's getting a concentrated amount of um, manure so nutrients right so it, it's getting a lot put back and it's a it's a very efficient system and I don't I don't well, know you, how he figured that out but uh, but it's pretty smart he's well I heard of oh, that's crazy I mean he I mean I, I'm a huge fan of Joel Salatin's obviously you know I've I've been following him for a long time and it's start you know listening to him talk was kind of what got me in the in the he really is crazy of uh, wanting to get out and start doing stuff like this anyway. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it is connected, but I remember because I've heard of this stuff before as far as like the rotation for the for the livestock like this. But I first remember hearing about it with chickens. And that mm-hmm. was like years ago. Mm-hmm. I remember hearing people doing like like do, doing the rotating, uh, you know, like basically people creating like these little uh, movable uh, movable pens on wheels that they were just kind of like rotating mm-hmm. all over their uh, all over their pastures, and the chickens would just hang out for like a couple hours in one yeah, section, like little zones. And yeah, then they move and yeah, they move them along, and and the same type of thing happened. I, mean, I didn't hear anything about bringing eight thousand year old dead 
plants back to life. But uh, there was the same. Type. It was something to that accord. Don't no, quote no. I'm, me. no I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I was. I, I was. I was saying that I, I hadn't heard any stories like that. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying I don't remember the chickens being able to do stuff like that. But it was. It was the same type of concept where you were making you you're basically making your own ground more fertile but instead of just being mm-hmm. like nick said instead of just beating the hell out of one section over and over and over it's and also over a and carbon over sequestration thing it's it's a carbon net negative you know how they are always on about all this carbon stuff well when you do the paddocking system it puts more carbon back into the ground because there's much more solar energy being caps uh, captured and stuff so it's mm-hmm. it's really crazy um but uh just the here's my uh, other thing i wanted to uh, to to segue into about yaks and then we can move on from farming or whatever is uh have you thought about or are you currently running ducks or chickens behind those because i'd love to tell you how easy it would be if once you get these paddocks up to make about a hundred grand a year <laughs> just the having just yeah. having like you can buy all the chickens online from a hatchery have them all delivered for big waves and just save up to buy the infrastructure to have and then breed your own and it's very simple and you yeah, already absolutely. have yak uh um manure which is gonna they're gonna the chickens are gonna scratch through and eat all the mm-hmm. bugs trying to eat all that manure and stuff and put out the best eggs in the world and you'll just be able to name your price on them once the chefs use them and try them or Hell you know yeah. the farmer yeah, but yeah i'd like, really like to do that I'd, i'm i'm thinking of ways i i uh we just we have a few chickens here just for our own personal egg um, usage, but mm-hmm. I smart. I, yeah, I really like chickens. I like birds. I think they're pretty cool. Are you and feeding I, all of your food scraps to them? Uh, I actually throw scraps? all of mine go to uh, the pigs, pretty much. Uh, oh, okay. I, well, I, the, you know, the the chickens get some. Like I um, those are the ones like the meat scraps go to I the didn't dogs know and the the chickens. Yeah, I've got some pigs. So I um, but yeah, I I think I I. I've heard that this business can be, it's really great because of the, you know, you're raising them for three months. I don't know how much, how you, how much you raise these birds, but um, it's really quick. I think it's, it's three or four months, right? So you could get three batches. It depends on if in, you're growing pellets or pellets okay. or um, egg layers. It depends on what, what you're going for. The, the egg sure. layers are going to give you like sustainable, continual revenue. Oh, but yeah, that pellet yeah. raising is, is, is like waves of cash over and over. Yeah. So I've only heard of anybody doing the um, pullets on pasture. I haven't heard. Um, I haven't heard oh, of, of big operations with with eggs. Can you? It's oh. is it the same thing? But you're just not killing the birds, and you have nest boxes in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's tractors. a website you can buy these things called bestnestboxes.com. Bestnestboxes.com, I believe. And uh, they, I think they cost like two hundred dollars a piece. But after you buy one or whatever, you can get. You know, a local welder take that to him, be like, "Hey, crack me out twenty of these for half the price or whatever," um, and uh, you just make an egg mobile, really, and something to lock them up at night. And then all you have to do is move them behind the day after you move those yaks, mm-hmm. and they'll clean up that paddock. And then you just hook up your tractor or whatever and move it to the next one behind them. And basically, they're always trailing. They're always keeping. Um, the thing clean and everything. And they, there's some places that even have like already made pre-made prefabbed, uh, uh, chicken track or they're not chicken tractors, but chick chicken mobiles, they call them egg mobiles. And, wow. uh, this is, this is slowly becoming the way people are going to be farming. This Joel Salatin thing is winning. Oh yeah. And I just, the, the thought of doing it with yaks, even have you even thought about putting a couple of, uh, just, just, uh, a, a couple of cows in there with them. Or do you already do that? I we don't have cow, cattle with them, um, mm. and I don't. I just don't want them. I think yaks are a lot better than cattle. They're not. They don't have the same market okay. value. Like I mean, somebody's probably going to buy beef from me more likely than they would buy yak, just because they've heard of it. And I could I could move the beef faster, but I. I it's just I'm not, just I'm thinking not about reason. diversity of manure. I'm I'm a farmer, so I'm always thinking about the soil. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's the, they're pretty much the same, except that the yaks yeah. are a little bit more, um, they're a little bit more efficient with grass than than um, the cattle yeah. are. So it might not be the same nutrient content. They mm. must be freaking out 
where you're at because you don't have harsh winters like you know Mongolia <laughs> and other things where like you know yeah. there's nothing to eat so they basically go mm -hmm. 30 40 days without eating sometimes probably yeah it's looking like the grass here is gonna grow all winter round this year nice. sometimes it does it because wow. we just get sun popping up like right now I mean it's it's dark out now but uh this today it was nice out it's not mm -hmm. you know it's probably in the 50s which isn't bad uh, Oregon is great it's just the best weather it's rainy and that can get kind of shitty but um yeah. not nah, dude yeah they, they it's a lot different of an environment and I worry that that they weren't going to be adapted to this because I got them from Eastern Oregon and Eastern Oregon's a desert. Um, so it's, you know, that's, that's much more similar to uh, the yeah. climate that they're natively from. But I worried about bringing them over here to the West um, in the, in the Valley. Cause we just, it's just a lot wetter out here. Um, but they do fine. Like they're, um, I've had like a, like we have to trim up the hooves every once in a while now we've, we've realized cause some of them, um, and it's never, it's not bad, but some of them have had little bits of foot rot on their, um, mm -hmm. on their hooves. But other than that, you know, they don't, they don't give a crap about the, the rain. They stand out there and wow. I have, a, I give them a barn, um, sometimes and uh they probably don't even and, use it <laughs> no they don't care <laughs> they don't care at all sometimes they'll use it you're if like it's animals like, i built this thing for you and they're like whatever <laughs> <laughs> we just like to rain yeah no they do it uh they're really hardy animals they're pretty impressive well yeah they're they're built they're built to be in colder climates right so i'm sure a little rain ain't gonna right. bother them they're just like ah whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah if it's not well, they're used to standing in like a foot sure. of snow right <laughs> yeah yeah well, if you do do the, the Joel Saladin thing with the axe, to my knowledge, you'll be the first person that will be able to video document it. And that you, you don't know what kind of shock waves you could send in Mongolia and, you know, wherever the hell else jacks are <laughs> being oh, yeah. you know, farmed right now. Uh, and you really could change incredible. more lives than you ever could really imagine with that. Because think about what Joel Salad has done with cow farming and all the people that are picking up two or three cows to start a herd. And it's happening because they can copy Joel Saladin's thing and get way more cow hours per acre than uh, or feed hours per acre than, than any other farmer. So yeah. like, that's just, that's, I mean, we can shift gears now, but I just, I really hope if you do end up doing that, especially with the egg mobile, you could show someone I'm, I'm 20 years old. I've already got a self-sustaining business. I'm about to start getting interns. La 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 la. And <laughs> dude, you could set up a yak Institute in Oregon and yak Institute. It'd be there over. Go. Seriously. Start oh, up yeah. a farming Institute. How to yeah. do it. No, that's actually, I, I've five? never thought about that angle of, of showing that because this is my plan is to is to get into doing this um and i'm just building the infrastructure but yeah i never really thought about like because their pastures way in the in himalayas do not grow like ours at all and uh and if they could do more rotation oh man i bet it would yeah. really improve it yeah i mean you would probably become globally known <laughs> Yeah, that'd be pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah, we'll see if I can do that. That'd be that'd be interesting. That'd be you're interesting. you're already famous any... enough to be on a yeah, Daddy's man. Russell's podcast. Right. Yeah, we, yeah, we should we should mention that you, you know you're on a you know you're you're, you're not kind enough to do our little podcast here, but you 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 made the big time at this point doing doing unregistered with Thaddeus Russell. Uh, well, I actually already scheduled the one with you before I scheduled with Thaddeus. Otherwise, oh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a I good like one, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but no, that was pretty exciting to be on Thaddeus Russell. He he's in Oregon. He lives um, about an hour away from me, and he does work that's with incredible. school socks. So that's I, I'm I've got connections there. So yeah. it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm not super famous. He heard about me on school socks, which is where everybody has heard about me. Yeah, but you have. But I mean, to to a to a decent extent, you have made a name for yourself just because I heard about of you on that. The fiends. And I, I think I, you know, I, I think I think Dave's right about you know what it, what the the idea he has here. I mean, Dave's Dave's famous for just throwing ideas out there at everybody else because he's not going to do them himself. But he wants other people to try. Them. <laughs> uh, but this one, yeah, I mean, I'm I mean, sorry, you at, I'm an idea guy. No, but you 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 just look at how many other people are out there on youtube with like uh, doing whatever you know and even if there are people already like joel salatin and people like that doing certain things like dave said if you would be the first documented one to be doing it with yaks then you know you're for you're first to market yeah that, man. in northwestern america 
Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, and then there you go. It's like, okay, you know, I mean, I wouldn't have I'm, thought of that either. I would originally thought, okay, yeah, you could, you could definitely put stuff like that out there for maybe other people around you or somewhere else in the U.S. that would want to try it. But yeah, it's even better for people who may be doing it already. And it just, you know, once it filters through to them, it's like you've uh, opened the door for uh, a whole culture to to shift. You know, man, that that'd be insane. So yeah, definitely get on mm-hmm. that. <laughs> Free, the yeah. free market's all about finding that niche and just you know pushing it as far as you can, right? Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, you were that's, put that's, in that's really those, cool that yak path for a reason, and you're on this podcast for a reason, and everything you do in life is for a reason, man. So take every step. I'm actually step with that. I, I'm, you know, I'm kind of curious to see like if they if uh, you know farmers in Nepal and Tibet and elsewhere where they actually raise uh, yak herds, how they could improve the uh, quality of their soil and the quality of their pastures using this kind of methodology. I'm actually kind of curious about yeah, that because I, you mentioned that they're solar power, yeah. you know, <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, you've mentioned that That's the pastures are not anywhere near the, the, qual- the, the level of, um, output that we have here in the States. So I'm kind of curious to see whether that would improve their output there, uh, just by virtue of the method that they're using. Yeah. I'm bad. That'd be I'll, huge. I'll to... I mean, can you imagine that? I You'd mean, be improving be... the lives of like people halfway across the world. That'd be incredible. Yeah, you could be and bringing it's a really grass poor part of the area too. Back. That's right. <laughs> it's really grasses. What yeah, uh, what uh, really climate zone are you in? Oh, I don't know that. I'm not. Just, I'm not. Uh, I'm not huge into okay, permaculture, so I don't know my zones. Oh. I'm in the Willamette Valley of Oregon. Um, oh. If that helps, we have a lot of clay soil, um, and uh, oh, just like Long Island, yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's really great. And Middle just, Alabama, some of the worst Alabama. shit to fucking try to plant in, man. Yeah, my uh, my yeah. all of mine is just pipes. thick clay, nothing but clay. Yeah, yeah. I bet I bet the Alabama clay is worse. I don't know about anything about New England, but it, ours is. It's not. Oh, I don't know. It's just it, we're the River Valley, right? And it's just everywhere is just clay built up from that and uh, and silt. It's pretty bad. I ain't gonna lie. It's pretty bad. I've had to replace like most of the piping in this house because of the fucking clay. Damn. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, damn. Okay. I love it or not. But anyway, it's just a mess. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's interesting. I, I really like that idea. So thank you, Dave. I think that's. Int- I'll have to. You're in. I've never a. been to okay. Tibet, so I wouldn't. I don't really know anything about the management practices. I know that in the history. Um, they historically rotated them, um, just kind of free range, and that's a very mm-hmm. different system still, right? Because it's not, um, yeah. it's not concentrated, which is kind of the the purpose of that, um, intensive grazing that Joel Salatin does. Because it, it sounds so contradictory to nature, you know, putting all those animals like stacked up together in this little square or whatever, let them sit there and basically eat it, scalp it to the ground and then move it to the next one and let them keep doing it. But nature needs that disturbance. And when we stop letting nature happen, like it should, if we weren't there and we wouldn't owning the property and stopping herds from moving, you know, naturally and stuff, then that that those seeds would be getting churned by those hooves. That's why the you know whoever made right. this place put those hooves in there the way they are. Uh, so yeah, I think that um, you know, and, and in the the wild, it, if you look at zebras, right, they they do kind of have that tightly packed um, formation because they're trying to disguise. You know, that's pattern their evolution yeah. is to defense against is, yeah defense against predators. Pack, it's that right. pack movement. And that's so, what Joel Saladin's system does, is it reinforces exactly. that. Yeah. It's, it's so the, instead of having a predator, it's the electric fence. That's his idea, right? So that mm-hmm. that's what keeps them um, tightly packed. And that <laughs> is more natural to a ruminant. <laughs> I've seen it happen. might not even it, give a shit. It, it, it can. <laughs> it, the fur is so thick, right? Exactly. It can, it can insulate them sometimes, but I've seen them get whacked. I've got, I've got hot <laughs> fences. I, mean, I keep okay, them hot. Okay. I, I need to keep those yaks in, you know. Well, yeah, you have <laughs> so you they, have had you have had multiple experiences of, of them wandering off, right? So yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time I've had the authorities call on me. <laughs> uh, 
which is well, which is um, understandable. It was a property violation um, having my property go, you know, on somebody else's. You know, I get it. You know, that's that's fair, but um, that is the one time. Well, see, and that goes that goes back to Dave's point about you, you know, you doing this the the idea that he had because you'd be the you know the first documented person doing it. Like even even your interactions with the police are firsts, most likely. Like how many people have that <laughs> app? Like how many people could say the police were called on them because their yaks got away? I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. outside of tibet and mongolia very few <laughs> yeah there was a there's a uh, there's a case of in colorado where somebody lost their yaks and they went to the to- like one of not the tallest peak i'm sure but it was a really tall peak and it was above the the tree zone and they just went they just started climbing up somewhere in colorado and uh i don't i never i don't i haven't checked in and see if they ever got the yaks down but for like two years they were running around and this year they found them and uh there's a yak group on on facebook there's one yak one-on-one group um <laughs> somebody posted up there asking for ideas oh how do we get our yaks back from the top of this mountain <laughs> but it, it's so it's, <laughs> after every two once years, people's yaks take off <laughs> i had another years, idea screwed, about this buddy. whole thing yeah, I think they went, they went back home. They went back home Colorado. is what they did. <laughs> They're like, "Oh, <laughs> mountains! This is where we belong. We ain't leaving. Fuck you guys." What, when you when you start making these videos, because I know you will, uh, about doing this, you should um, put them in like every English to Cambodian, you know, language group, and every English to Tibetan, uh, Tibet, Tibetan, whatever, Tibetan. wherever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> group that way they can get them to their family members that are out there doing it yeah yeah that would be really interesting i i'm I'm, like i have some people that i'm going to talk to about this um soon i've got some i know a guy i don't i haven't never met him but uh there's there's a tibetan guy in that group um i'll have to reach out to and and see if he's if he knows anything about joel salatin um because mm-hmm. there, there's, there's a price. Like, because since yaks are uh, such a big thing to that culture, um, they're, it, it, the yaks are they're as that part of the world kind of becomes more modern. Um, there's a lot more people interested in researching it because there's there's hardly any research done on on yaks compared to other livestock. You know, cattle like the taurine how, cattle how breeds good is have been their milk for studied. You? It's really fatty, so I think it would be pretty good for you. It's um, it's comparable to you. Still haven't tried it yet. <laughs> no, I've t- I've had cheese now, um, okay, but I that's haven't progress. been able to milk them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's somebody in the well, states. There, have you had it any? Have you had it studied, or has there been any big studies on it? There have been a few. So the the fat percentage is a, it's like eleven percent about, which is pretty good. That's like a really fatty milk, um, and I don't know anything about the vitamin content. If it's any different than than um, cattle milk or or uh, goat's milk, I know that it's it's more similar to uh, cow's milk than goat's milk because goat's milk is already like I think it's. It's like naturally homogenized. I think that's what it, because mm-hmm. the fat and the and the milk are not separated. But while like at least in goats, right? And so I think that with yaks and and cattle, the cream separates. But otherwise, I don't know anything about it because I've never had the milk. I've never seen it. Um, but there is somebody in Colorado who occasionally makes cheese, and. Uh, I got lucky to grab some pretty expensive cheese from her because uh, I I said I have I have to try it, um, and it was really good. It was, it, I don't know if you had goat cheese and you have like real goat cheese, you can taste the barnyardy goaty flavor, and I don't really <laughs> like that. Cow cheese is it's pretty. You could probably be making a killing on yak butter, man. Is all oh, I'm absolutely. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, you could probably I'd, be selling that on Amazon. <laughs> It's I'm we're working on taming a calf. Me and uh, my herd partner, the guy who, who owns half the the herd, we're working on taming him for that purpose. Because right now, uh, we could try to milk the cows if we put them in um, a stanchion. I could I could get milk from th- this next summer if I wanted to, 
but Mm -hmm. it's a traumatic process and it's really hard and I wouldn't be able to do it very often. Um, Mm -hmm. Who's so it going to be I'm more for, the yak, the cow, or you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. We'll see. If the, if the foot gets loose, uh, it'll be very physically traumatic, <laughs> I'd say. Because yaks are pretty dangerous. I don't, I don't know what a mad would be scary. yak looks like. <laughs> oh, it's pretty frightening, man. Uh, I, I wonder if I have videos. I should put up videos. I've, got, I've I seen had a this, mad bull, you had that, so I you had that crazy, imagine. You had that crazy one, right? That just hated Oh, uh, yeah, man. He was nuts. <laughs> He he would attack the trucks. We'd go out there because we couldn't walk because he'd try to fight us. And then we brought out the uh, the tractor. He wouldn't go after because it was too loud. But uh, he'd go after our little Toyota Tacoma, and uh, he just sat there and we like pushed him a little bit. He'd keep fighting us. I'm, I I've got to have videos of him somewhere. And he was oh he was scary. They he when they get Uber real alpha, mad. Huh? <laughs> oh he was he was a he was a beast. Kayak the yak. He's I'll I'll tell you the story of him. This is this is good for podcasts. I I uh, he this was this bottle baby bull that uh, my herd partner got, and he was he's a very beautiful animal, one of the white and black yaks, um, and he was just big and and oh he was just he was a really pretty yak, and uh, he at first he was pretty friendly, like we could scratch him, but uh, he would, he started like getting a little bit ornery as that mating season started. And, uh, and then me and my uncle, we were hurting them because they got out and we weren't doing it the right way. Like, I don't know if you know about Temple Grandin, but uh, if you're interested in, in animals, you should really look into um, Temple Grandin, particularly livestock animals. She's a, She's got a lot of good stuff about handling. And I didn't listen to her that time. So <laughs> the yaks were a little bit riled up. And it was, uh, you know, kayak was a little horny because uh, it's it was the middle of rut season. And uh, my uncle must have was just a little bit too loud or something. Or um, he, he was just a little too close to that bull. And uh, I come around the side of the, the house and I just see my uncle get tossed up in the air. You know, I don't know how. <laughs> how, how, shit. how how's it? far up in the air he was but he let out a, a death scream i don't know if you ever heard somebody like yeah <laughs> get that badly like the hit wilhelm something. scream i've no yeah! That is. yeah yeah pretty much just it, it, he was i thought he was dead i i was sure that oh this yak was, had killed him and i was oh shit what am i gonna do so i that ran up to yak. try and get this yak away from him and uh by the time i had like time to think of what well, what do i do to this yak he had tossed me up in the air and i I landed Holy on my shit. back and uh and so but we he he walked off thank god i don't know who knows what he, he could have stood there and and beat the the shit out of us and stomped you know trampled us to the ground yeah. but uh he he walked off a little bit and so we ran back up onto the porch and uh and uh we got him back in just by letting him kind of run around and do their thing <laughs> and uh and after that we're like well shit what are we gonna do and we're like okay now we're gonna start we gotta find a way to get rid of this bull so we started working on it and ever since he was he uh he was just mean he and we it took a long time trying to sell him because at first we're like well this is a really nice bull he, he's a beautiful animal he's gonna throw really awesome calves we've had him for a reason like well, I guess we decided to keep him for the breeding season. Then we try and sell him to somebody who could handle him better than we could, and and we it, we couldn't find anybody because nobody wants to buy a, a mean yak. And so uh, mm-hmm. he he would just I you know I I'd have to find ways to get around him, and uh, I had a lot of fun with that yak. I was a I was a little bit you know I, when I started this I was fifteen and, and and I was like sixteen, so I was a lot stupider than I am now. And uh, I had a lot of fun <laughs> taunting that yak. Nice. Um, Wait till you're nice. 30. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'll be looking back now. Yeah. Oh, God, how boy. the hell am I still alive? Jesus Christ, man. What was right. I thinking? You're, you think you're stupid <laughs> now? You're 19. You know, you're thinking, oh, my gosh. Just wait. Oh, You'll be better. thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It gets so much better, man. So much better. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're gonna look. You're gonna day. look back on those times and be like, "Ah, oh, it was nothing. It was whatever." <laughs> <Still> <laughs> That's so much, much, much more crazy shit. Since still, then. still yeah. doing stupid and crazy shit all these years later. So you know. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I don't know if I've learned that well, but I don't. I don't taunt yaks as much anymore. <laughs> but that that, that bull, he treed me twice because uh, I'd go out there and I would just kind of watch him, and then uh, when I was working on fences, he'd come up 
be, I'd, he'd just be, he'd see me from a long distance and I'd be working on something and then, uh, he'd be getting closer. And so I'd have to like run to the, the trees in my field and, and, uh, and one, yeah, I, tr- I decided to try and climb a tree and see if he'd ignore me, but he sat there with me for like 20 minutes before, um, <laughs> oh, a, another yak came by and he started fighting him. And so, uh, that was <laughs> oh my, my distraction. So I got out of there. That was, a, that was a moment, but, uh, eventually we did <laughs> get rid of him. We, we had, uh, we scheduled the butcher to come out and this is a butcher I had known. So he, he, he knew about that yak and, uh, he called me, this is, I don't know if you've ever dealt with any butchers, but, uh, most of them are pretty conservative. They don't like to go out of their comfort zone and, uh, that's, yeah, whatever. Um, but, uh, he didn't want to, he didn't want to butcher the yak. So he called me up after my herd partner scheduled it with him. And he's like, Hey, I know you're the only guy around here with yaks. Am I coming to your place and killing that mean yak? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And, uh, he's like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Sorry. I don't <laughs> want the liability. Cause he's, like, he was just afraid that this is a wild animal. It's going to freak and he's not going to get a good shot on it. And he's going to end up hitting it in the shoulder. And, you know, he, so he explained it to me and that was, it was fair. And so I was like, well, shit, what am I going to do with this animal? And I'm not kidding. Within, within five minutes of hanging up with the butcher, my herd partner calls me and he's like, hey, listen, we don't need to have that butcher come out. I've got somebody who's going to buy this yak alive. And uh, it turned out to be this Tibetan, uh, or I guess she wasn't Tibetan, but she had married a Tibetan and she was a Buddhist. She saw that this yak was for sale and, uh, and she, she decided, Honey, well, this I've yak got can't the die. Christmas present for you. Right. <laughs> so she, so she raised like, we, we told her this is a dangerous bull and, and we kind of told her what, what could you do about it? We, Cause we thought, well, castrating him might be the only option because, cause it, we thought it had to do with, you know, he thinks that humans are mating competition. So that's, well, listen, that's, man, yeah, you that's, guys got in his way and when you got blue balls, the right. size of his, can you really, I mean, you think about it, man, I'd be Plus pretty pissed off at the people the who got in my way. 24 <laughs> seven. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so he was pretty mad <laughs> but uh he so we she raised money and uh and got him castrated and they they cut off the tips of his horns and so now he lives in in uh in uh northern california on a tibetan uh buddhist retreat center have you he's you, happy <laughs> he, he seems to be just fine with everybody Really? So that's what I was gonna say because I I remember I remember the story I remember hearing this story when you finally got rid of him. But have you like you you followed up and stuff and he's still doing all right? Yeah, yeah. I get pictures it's of just him that toxic masculinity. That's right. After he was castrated, he did fine. Yeah, uh, maybe that's the solution. And, and, <laughs> well, listen, let's not. Well, I, I suspect it all started when you were messing with him when he was in the middle of mating how, season because. Once, once you cross their path and you, you make it to where you're interfering with whatever it is they're trying to do and they're trying to mate, I suspect they pro- he probably viewed you as a as mating competition from there on out. Absolutely. And and part of it, like the psychology of a baby bull that's been raised on bottle is that it's, he thinks that a human is its mother. So, it, you know, he doesn't really recognize a difference or yeah, at least no the same difference between right? – the herd and the people so you know because it it's, it's different like now my bulls if i go out there and i'm messing with the the herd he, they're scared of me they're not going to tell me to, to fuck off because i'm, I'm getting away <laughs> breeding and, unless i was out there in, in the yeah. middle of the season which is you know if i'm if he's trying to get it on and i'm in the middle he, the yak's going to toss me for sure but <laughs> um but it part of that was you know he he already kind of he didn't have that recognition of well, a human's a predator, um, and then you know he. I think that's where it it started. To absolutely, we you know we got in the way, and uh, and that's where it started, which is a bummer. And that's why you never uh, never raise testosterone <laughs> fueled animals um, on bottle because they they especially bulls and and even boars. Uh, you you really have to be careful because they're unpredictable because even even though you might be their mother and have been friendly you know they treat you just like they treat all the other animals um, yeah which is mean animals are really mean to each other (laughs) exactly (laughs) you need to be careful because you're not the same right the the yaks have horns and the and the boars have tusks but if you're foreign they they yeah they don't like it yeah no but see that's that that is is that is that a predator is that (laughs) 
Yeah, and I, I think that is interesting because I think most people would just automatically assume all the positive stuff that would come out of like the connection with bottle feeding, you know, because like yeah. I was, I, I mean, the only experience I've ever had with that was like with much smaller animals, like when I worked in all the different, uh, when I, you know, I was younger and working kennels. See, and- I was bottle fed, so this explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I don't think most people take into account the fact that yeah, it's it's not it's you're not forming a bond. You're just you're 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 breaking down barriers, and they're just going, oh yeah, there's there's no difference between anybody out here. We're all we're yeah. all just we're all just pigs. Yeah, you, you might want to keep thing. those barriers in place. They might be there for your safety. Exactly. <laughs> just a thought. Yeah, and I think you could be smart about it. Like I, before this incident, he'd never. I don't think he'd ever hurt anybody. Um, you know, if and if I had been smart about it, if me and my uncle had been, you know, just had, you know, if I had just thought, well, and not there was no them. reason to, yeah, there's no reason to, uh, <laughs> to be running them around like that we did and, and really started them getting them riled up. So that could have been avoided. Um, and I, there's absolutely <laughs> ways you can teach an animal, even while you're bottle feeding it, that there are boundaries. But for me, it's not, uh, it is risky. And because, because they're, I don't know, even dealing with humans is risky, right? We're chemicals, chemicals can really influence behavior. And when you don't have any reasoning, like, uh, like a yak, uh, you know, that's, that's all they think on. Uh, so you, you can't really trust them to, to think that, uh, just because you fed them, um, or because you treated them nicely, that they have the same understanding, uh, as a human would. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Well, like I said, I, I think uh, most, most I mean, I because I've seen it done, you know, I mean, in, in certain situations, like re- rehabilitation situations, it's kind of unavoidable. But yeah, like I said, most people just don't take these things into account. I don't, I don't think I ever would have either if I hadn't seen it, like I said, even on a much smaller scale. I've seen it with smaller animals, the same type of thing where it, you know, you go into it thinking, oh, yeah, this is going to, you know, this is just going to make things easier down the road. And it's like, no, no, it's going to backfire in your face horribly, horribly wrong. Well, I mean, bulls can do the same thing to you, man. It's really all. That's what I'm saying. Any, that's what I'm saying. Any, it can happen with any, almost any species because, you know, they are, they are wild animals, (laughs) you know. They, uh, there's, there's, there's a reason, like, you know, you said the ones you didn't, they're naturally afraid of you. You know, that's supposed to be their state. <laughs> they're supposed to yeah. be fearful of you in most situations. Cause they're by, by and large they're foreign. They're, yeah. But by and large, they're, they're mostly docile creatures. Yaks, right. They're not, they're not super aggressive well, I, creatures by na- by nature. Correct. Yeah. I would say they're actually, they're pretty aggressive. Oh, like are they really? wild yaks would probably go after humans. Um, but they look so yeah, apathetic, though. They're, they're they're pretty mean. They're it's just they're mean the hair. to each other. That's all it is. Yeah, th- but they're uh, like they, when I put cattle in with them, I, I have had um, my our neighbors' cattle um, in with our yaks before, and uh, the yaks pretty quickly play date go after them, and, and they they're <laughs> I don't know how much of it is establishing dominance versus um, just kind Thinking of bullying for the sake of it, because. Yeah, I don't think they think the cattle are predators, right? Well, but, th- what time of d- day did you put the cows in? If you might, <laughs> do you remember? No, I don't know. If you put them in in the middle of the night and they wake up with them, they mm. treat them differently than if you introduce them in the middle of the day. So okay, I thought that you were going to give me some, some, some hippie <laughs> no, no, that was all. biodynamic timing thing. That you have I, to get it I right. Thought on he was that. No, the zodiac right sign lined up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, that makes sense. That makes sense. They they, they they wake up and they're like, oh, well, this obviously isn't a threat because it's here. So we've just got to establish dominance. I, I think it's that's how the animal psychology works out on like most of them. Some of them might pop up if they're real packish and kill it. But I, that would probably be the best attempt, I would think, is, is add that stuff at night with those things. that Because they can't see at night, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, but right. wouldn't, 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 the ones you add, wouldn't the ones you added – also have to be sleeping at the time too so they don't notice that they're being put in with these other animals i don't know no you can you know cows you can walk them around oh, okay. by the little yeah you know you're walking the cows at into night yeah i see what you're saying all right i was thinking of it in reverse and going that may not work but <laughs> so uh, let's talk crypto because we didn't last week oh. let's shift gears completely <laughs> what's happening with bitcoin coinbase just added B- bch which is bitcoin cash and steam is four dollars yes it is yes Mm -hmm. it is 
Uh, I I don't know, Dave. Everything, ever the I mean, the crypto world is it's a very interesting ride to be on. <laughs> and I well, as, I far, as, far as, first... as far as Bitcoin goes, I think uh, the highs that we saw were was you know approaching twenty thousand. I, that obviously wasn't sustainable, and it's kind of reached mo- a much stronger level of support here around like 15K. Uh, I still think it could probably go down a little bit more, but uh, where it's at right I now has a pretty solid base. Up. So, yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm thinking yeah. it's going to be for a while. Well, I mean, that, that may that may be well, may well be the case, but I, I'm, I'm, thinking 50K I'm, pretty, sh- I'm pretty sure that the the immediate this immediate dip that's happened over the past like day and a half now at this point is 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 purely because of the addition of of bitcoin cash to coinbase because so many people were trying to dump their bitcoin in a hurry and you know to to the point to the point where of course as usual you know like clockwork actually coinbase had to shut down like five minutes in (laughs) they're just like okay we're up and running uh now we're not you know because they overload i god i hate coinbase i hate coinbase my hands are tied like the only one i can use but i hate coinbase Get a VPN, you can use anything. Yeah. Wait, well, uh, what? Get a VPN and you what? can use it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you're you're right. I haven't, I'm, I'm not, I haven't I'm, taken the steps necessary to do it. I'm not, I'm not allowed to use Poloniex in New York. I'm not allowed to use Shapeshift in New York, allegedly. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, get allegedly. yourself get yourself a good VPN. Well, no, no, no. It's well, probably worth it's probably worth the price of it to be able to save yourself the hassle by use by using a, a ex- an exchange of your choice. Versus having to deal with only a, of extremely limited options because uh, you know because you're not you're not willing to mm-hmm. shell that money out. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, you're you're right, and I probably should. I, I like I said, I have I haven't done what I need to do mainly because I don't really want to spend the money to do it. But uh, as as I've gotten more and more into it, I've I'm starting to get to the point where like yeah, you know, it's probably worth the investment just to where I don't have to be stuck with using Coinbase. Yeah. I, so, um, what's your, what's your what's your thoughts on the whole Bitcoin Cash, Andre? And then I'd like to hear also Nick what what he thinks. Um. Well, I mean, I I don't really have any thoughts on it other than uh, cool. There's another one there. <laughs> um. I don't know. It, it's. I guess it's a little bit more flexible than Bitcoin is, but I think the only reason that's the case is because there's less volume on Bitcoin Cash than there is on Bitcoin, right? Mm-hmm. Because I mean, functionally, it's not very much different from Bitcoin. It can't handle significantly more transactions, so it's going to get bogged down the minute it starts getting a lot of volume, like much more than what we've seen right now. So I don't because uh, it doesn't have the same supporting infrastructure. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I mean, assuming that it, it would, you know, jump up in price, you know, ten, fifteen times or whatever, you you will you'll notice the that lack of support that yeah, lack i think of i'm gonna hold on on my cash i don't know i don't I'm i would touch i mean i, I, I would i wouldn't i wouldn't try and get rid of it because it's it, it will gain in value but uh um if you ever feel like trying to trade it out uh do it on a non-busy day if you can uh because y- you'll notice the backlog on transactions on bitcoin cash all oh, right well right now yeah and again though but that's just that's that's simply because of the addition to coinbase even though it wasn't working it you know people for the most part people were at least able to access theirs because that was the the other thing that anybody who had well, there's probably a lot of people going to jump on the bitcoin cash train to mine it to make money uh, yeah. I, oh, I suspect. I, so. I think that I think the difficulty is already uh, up enough on that, where it's it's not as profitable to mine at the, at the current uh, moment. But you know, I'm sure you could. Mm-hmm. But I think. I mean, well, and there again, like I said, it's it's going to suffer from the same problems that Bitcoin is going to suffer from, but it's going to have far less support than Bitcoin does right now. See, so I, again, I don't know about that, man. With people like Roger Veer behind it, and uh, you know, there I know a whole bunch. Oh, of people. No, that's not that's not to, that's not to say that they won't catch up. But as okay. it stands right now, Bitcoin Cash lacks the system infrastructure to where the transaction limit why not both. is not going to be a problem. You know what I mean? It, it's going to be a problem until it until it gets a little bit more popular. 
the more crypto, the merrier. In my I, opinion. I think oh yeah, of course. I think it's pretty popular right now. It's got <laughs> there was there's a lot there's but, a lot of eyes. I like I said, man. I'm just I'm going by what I see in in you know just what I'm looking at uh, the numbers I see and the and the people I look the people I follow and talk to and there just there seems to be a lot because I've I've already seen things popping up where certain companies uh, there's a lot of people stores, pushing. I see it too. Yeah, but I see I see I, I've seen signs in like store windows and stuff like that that are all of a sudden like the first crypto they're deciding to take is bitcoin cash instead because mm -hmm. the, the you know the, the one the one the one big advantage it does have right now is that for people that were late to the party in the crypto world in general who want to get in they can purchase bitcoin cash for cheaper uh you know normally the transactions are a lot faster than what's ha what's been happening in the last day and yeah. a half and yeah. they're a hell of a lot cheaper than the bitcoin transactions you know bit the, the oh whole God. the whole the whole deal with, bit, with bitcoin cash was you know at least the proponents of it's what they say is it's you know it's a lot closer to the original vision of the white paper for bitcoin so it's actually yeah, yeah and, and, it, and it will be that, until it gains in in value and uh well, it's, we'll see. Uh, volume of transactions start bogging down the system, but uh, I mean, there again, if it's if it starts to get more popular, more people are going to be running nodes, so you know there's going to be more support. Well, I yeah, just want to see what happens when all this issue. this Coinbase settles out and actually lets you trade your Bitcoin Cash or whatever. Because, I think they like, opened it two or three people. They couldn't even they, get it. They opened it back up again today, but it was still spotty. For okay. what I, I saw, it jump to eight thousand for a couple of seconds. That, for a that, couple of that was a glitch. That was a glitch on okay. <laughs> because they had to. Uh, the, it got so like I said, it was like five. It was. It was I think I, I don't think I was being facetious. I think it was only like five minutes in. They had to shut the whole thing down because the the orders yeah. were so insane that it 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 fucked up the system. And yeah, I think it, it actually spiked to not. It showed nine thousand. I think was the screenshot. I saw and uh, they immediately were like yes we have to close everything now although I do believe there were at least a couple of orders that were allowed to be sold and or you know sold and bought at that price I saw I saw at least I, I saw a couple yeah that is insane especially because anybody who is holding uh, you know some some Bitcoin cash uh, got at least part got at least part of it for literally nothing because you know you were just handed it for having Bitcoin at the time of the fork. I got all of mine for no reason. Well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. You know, everybody, everybody who actually, has Bitcoin actually, cash, more, at least some of it came from for not for nothing. So I got more actual BCH coins than I do uh, Bitcoins. Well, uh, like just the way it shook out after the fork, I'd already transferred I, and shape shifted so many coins. I ended, yeah. That's what blew my mind. <laughs> Did we lose something? No, I don't think so. I would like to point out that oh. Steam is approaching four dollars now. SBD is over thirteen, or was over thirteen. I think it dropped back down to like twelve. Pivx is something. wild. Too. Pivx at eleven well, bucks today. I was like, "What the fuck? Oh, Where did this come yeah. from?" I'm holding on to bit shares and hoping that it spikes over a dollar because, like, I bought in when it was at like I think. 10 cents not even 10 cents it was like seven or eight cents per bit shares and so now it's at like 60 cents so i'm uh, i'm making a killing on that and it's just it has no signs of Buy slowing XRP. down so i'm hoping that it hits the dollar oh yeah the, the, but the, yeah the steam is trade. at four fucking dollars man this shit is fucking wild <laughs> yeah uh, i went i just logged on to the the seize the liberty account that you still haven't started posting from yes <laughs> i know i'm sorry i'll get i'll, I'll get on that i, I apologize <laughs> which is funny because I, I recently like we have like six hundred dollars on there i was like what <laughs> that, that's funny too fuck I, yeah valuation man it's all fucking it's all about that valuation i just i just one of the one of the patreon episodes imagine just, what happens when the the facebook version of steam it comes out you know that's all i'm saying well, actually, it's it's funny it's funny uh, that we're we're talking about Steam. It's uh, Vice. dot com is going to launch a uh, pay to watch porn website, and it's going to be built on the Steam blockchain. So there is because hmm. uh, the new the who pays to watch the porn hard fork. Huh? <laughs> I said, who pays to no watch no no? Porn? They, you get paid to watch. Porn. Oh, you, you get, get paid, paid to watch porn. porn. Yes, what? yes, yes. 
Oh, that man. doesn't sound. It's going to be the right. Oh, great! That that here comes the rise of the neckbeards. Everybody, all the all the basement dwellers are finally going to uh, <laughs> the ones who oh, the, ones, yeah. the ones the ones the ones who didn't get into the crypto game are now finally. It's our time. It's finally our. It's time. It's our time. Oh, but, but no, we'll so pay the, you so to hard watch our degeneracy. <laughs> fuck yeah. No, but so Hard Fork 20 is going to be coming out, uh, I want to say in March. Might even be before March. I don't know. I have to look that up again. But uh, Hard Fork 20 is coming out soon. And one of the things they're doing is what's called uh, Steam Media Tokens, SMTs. And basically, you take a portion of the pool, the reward, the Steam reward pool, and you split it into its own currency, right? So it's it's built on the Steam blockchain, and it communicates with a blockchain, but it's its own token. Right, and you can set up how you know, however you want the parameters to work. So you can split it into a couple of different tokens, like uh, Steam and SBD, and Steam Power are now on the Steam platform. Or you can have it, you know, however however way you want to do it. Uh, you can set your inflation rate up and down, however you want to set it up. But uh, it's going to allow you know, like custom made currency like a custom made currency market that all exists on the steam blockchain that's all built on the steam blockchain and vice is the first to my knowledge the first major company to use this technology and vice is the number two purveyor of pornography in the world i think if i remember correctly so this is a an, an, this vice? is a huge investment yes vice hmm was not so I mean, this is I, okay. I granted, it it's porn. Uh, I get it. You know, we can make jokes about it all day, but still, it's it's an I enormous company. Thought it was Mind company. Geek. Mind Geek. I thought it was Mind Geek. G E E K. I'm absolutely positive that like they own ninety percent of all the porn. I I could be wrong, but Nick, <laughs> what do, what's your thoughts on Bitcoin Cash? I actually don't know anything about Bitcoin Cash. I I have uh, I have investments in cryptocurrency. I think it's valuable, but I I am not very uh, up to date. I'm I'm, not, I'm a bad libertarian. We we have to get a yak. You know, we have to get a crypto, and you know, each coin is based off a, you know a yak or something, and you know <laughs> yak coin, <laughs> yak coin, and that way you could just privately trade your yaks just with your cryptocurrency. Listen, man. If, if if the crypto if the crypto kitty market can explode, there's got to be somebody who's you know there's got to be a place for the yak somewhere. You can do something. <laughs> yeah, it, I would absolutely take cryptocurrency if somebody wanted to buy yak. And I I often offer people discounts. Um, if you if you are gonna give me Bitcoin that be your over first dollars, video you know, on your new YouTube videos. You probably yeah you're right. Um, so I yaks for Bitcoin. That's a great yeah. headline. So yeah, I don't know crypto anything about yaks. Bitcoin Cash. Oh. Crypto yaks. Crypto yaks. <laughs> so um, yeah, well yeah, it's it's Bitcoin Cash is is I it's got a lot of potential I think to fix a lot of what's going on with Bitcoin with the slow well, confirmations so yeah, and the well, mining like, no, fees like, and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, but like what Andre said, eventually that stuff will catch up too, because um, it's yeah. But, but I, I think I mean I think it's free. There's going to always be a point, a, a, para, a parabolic, parabolic point at the top to get out of all these cryptos, just as history plays out. So it's uh, it's all about riding that wave to the top and getting out when you feel comfortable, in my opinion. Well, those people that have sold out, you know, that had a million bitcoins and sold out at a thousand dollars when it was at a thousand, and they had they never looked back. And they don't even feel sorry about it. Yeah, so, you have a billion dollars, right? Why would you feel sorry? <laughs> Yeah, they probably rebought. Re <laughs> well, yeah, rebought the Bitcoin. <laughs> made even more. But I, well, see, my, I, I think, I mean, I mean, I, I'm not. I, I don't really have it. I've said this before. I don't really have a dog in the Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash fight. I don't really care. I hodl both, and uh, just uh, you know, I'm enjoying the ride. But I, I think, at least, especially with like the the more news that comes out lately from the IRS and from from you know from washington what the the bills they're trying to put in place and one of them that's supposed to be i think is supposed to be signed by trump either today or tomorrow or something uh they're really trying to crack down and you know go after people for capital gains and stuff like that so i i really think that you know largely there, you're gonna see a huge shift to the privacy coins which it, you know that leaves the Bitcoin Bitcoin Cash debate in the in the dust because you know neither of them really qualify. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, I've, I've seen, I've seen a lot of people who, you know, there were, there was people who made a mass exodus from Bitcoin to Bitcoin cash during when, you know, when Coinbase finally opened up the ability to buy and, uh, buy and sell temporarily as, as, as temporary as it was rather. But I know a lot, I've seen a lot of other people just shifting towards, you know, things like Monero and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I know, I know a lot of people still like Dash too, and that 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 one that one took off. I, I think I hit fifteen. Dash is blowing up. Yeah, I told uh, told a lot of people to get in at Dash at four hundred, uh, and they've given me Dash back in in investment. <laughs> yeah, know, I got I got it returns. well before that. I got I got I think I got it at like one forty, <laughs> but I got I got out a lot. I, I was I monitoring out. it. I have a few currencies I monitor, and I have a, a bunch of people that you know like trust me to tell them when to buy stuff and. Uh, that's that's I make a, a little bit of crypto on the side doing that. It's really cool. It's it's really cool. It's like just neat because I stay on top of most of it, but not like in a super intricate way where I like know every little detail about every little coin. Yeah, I just I keep track of the prices. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> and try to figure out like i watch from the sidelines yeah i mean like i i don't really i i i've I've learned my lessons enough that i don't dabble in day trading because anytime i've tried to capitalize i usually end up getting screwed it's only it's only been things like just be like the the aforementioned pivx just because i happened to throw a hundred like a hundred bucks at that a month or so ago (laughs) and then when it shot up over 11 when it shot up over 11 bucks i was like what i was like damn man that's a you know that's a decent turnaround in a, you know in a month or so um but largely i i end up yeah. screwing up and losing money so i i don't i don't bother with that i just i look i, I look uh, at the prices enough to know when like you know cuz i've i've considered getting not t- completely out of bitcoin altogether but at least uh diversifying further i'm just so torn cuz i know like you know the the two like camps Italy and Brulia? Well, the, well, the two camps right now are currently, you know, the Bitcoin Cash camp is sure that Bitcoin is going to die a horrible death because of the, you know, the overloaded transaction, you know, the, for the f- quadrillion. Well, time. no, 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 just like now it's going to be because I mean, I think I saw the last numbers I saw was the uh, the unconfirmed transactions hit two hundred eighty thousand mm-hmm. earlier, like was t- I think earlier today or yesterday or something. I mean, that's insane, dude. I know people that have been waiting days for their things to go through. Oh yeah, that's what I figured out. The reason my exchange has been tied up, it's been three weeks. That is beyond like yours. Yours is just lost in the sea of transactions. Then at that point, <laughs> if it's been that yeah. long, you know, most people eventually because I it. found it out, and someone t- someone broke this down. It's because everyone's exchanging on these wallets, and all these wallets are using the same exact miner fee. So they're all hitting the same thing, same blocks, all at the same time. So they're not the 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 cool, the wallets are going to have to integrate to where they're picking the fastest time for their people, not the cheapest one or the standard one or whatever. Hey guys, you want to know a cryptocurrency that can handle thousands, tens of thousands of transactions a second? No transaction fees. Doge. You guys want to hear about it? No. You guys want to hear about it? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's called Steam. It's called Steam. <laughs> Just put it out there. Uh, I'll st- I'll stick with Ripple. Yeah, I'll stick you with, can also I'll stick with get Ripple paid to watch now. porn on there. No thanks. Oh my God! Come on. Um, hey, look, that's an SMT. That's do. not the Steam blockchain. Okay, Roger. That's here's my different. suggestion to everyone before we end this show, and I really want you guys to listen to me very carefully. <clears throat> Ripple is going to be added to Coinbase sometime soon. That's not ga- that's need not a to guarantee. You need to buy it, even if it's... But it's, lo- it's definitely even, looking that way. I would highly suggest buying it until it's $10 a coin. As much as you can. Don't buy anything else. Focus on that for a little while. Yeah, Ripple... In uh, rant. End of stuff. Ripple. A lot, a lot of people... There, there's some people who... The... The Goldman Sachs of the world are behind Ripple, so you either ride the wave or you miss out. 
Okay, the, the Goldman Sachs of the world. Okay, that that that's 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 not really true. There's 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 a the big difference between the Ripple coins and what banks and other people are using the Ripple Ledger, the Ripple blockchain for, or Ledger or whatever. It's a completely different thing. Uh, but the price of the the price of XRP has gone up. I mean, there was people, a couple of people who floated the idea of it hitting a dollar by the end of this year, and everybody called them crazy. And then because it, it was it had been stagnant at like you know twenty twenty five cents for most Oof. of the year. And then in the past uh, couple, in the past, you know, less than a week, I think it's all of a sudden shot up. It broke a dollar today, and you know, the, the people I know that are, are a little uh, more invested in this and 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 seem to know a lot more about it are suggesting that yeah, that you know, now with the way things are looking, five, maybe even ten dollars by the end of next year is not a uh, is not is not out of the realm of possibility anymore. And uh, that's pretty exciting because you can still get it for you know I think it was like a buck thirteen the last time I saw it. Uh, I yeah that's that's one I, I don't I don't regularly give advice but that that is one that I would definitely uh, consider get, getting involved in. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of it currently. That and Litecoin, I would I would still continue cons or I would consider getting continue buying. I'm torn Litecoin on Litecoin. I I've had I've held Litecoin. The big guy just sold out on all his Litecoin. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing. Charlie Lee just dumped all of his, and uh, allegedly, and you know, claiming that he was doing so so there wouldn't be a conflict of interest. Although that doesn't necessarily make sense to me because like why would he you know. <laughs> If he's the one who created it, there's not a conflict of interest from him owning it, owning some, you know. But anyway, you know, I don't think he has a control. I don't think I don't think he had the fifty one percent to put everybody out. So I don't think that was a problem. But uh, I mean, it's it's been holding steady. But there, the Litecoin, Litecoin seems to have a lot of the same problems, you know. Eventually, because it's it's not it's not much different than Bitcoin either. Unfortunately, I mean, the transaction fees are still a lot cheaper, and I, I'm I'm a big fan of it. Um, I think once the, the once what is it the Lightning Network? I don't think it's fully implemented there, right? I think they started to maybe. Um, once that happens, supposedly mm -hmm. it's gonna make it better. But uh, I, I I don't know. X XRP seems to, uh, Ripple seems to have the biggest upside right now for especially for people who are looking to get in right now. <laughs> so you know, I mean, don't count on to, don't count for on don't count on it to make you millions in the next you know couple of months unless you're planning on putting in close to a million to start with however uh you know by the end of by the end of by the end of this coming year it could uh you, you could really pay off if you manage to get someone hold some i still honestly on this whole crypto thing you know crypto just all that it offers the decentralized the, the everything essentially an unstoppable manner i think it's going to have its most potent effect at the local levels to where startup societies can literally just start from scratch. All we need is five miners and solar panels, and we can start a society <laughs> because we can price stuff through this cryptocurrency. If everyone well, hey, uses with it. Uh, with the advent of SMTs on the Steam blockchain, you can do that without even needing miners. Hey. Explain that. Sorry. Such a steam. All right, show. so SM, so SMTs function as ver as tokens that are built on the Steam blockchain. So you use an amount, you you take an amount out of the Steam blockchain, out of that reward pool, and you break it down into its own custom currency, and you can set how it's inflated and how many coins are produced over a certain period of time, and how that those tokens are distributed. Whether it's you know a single token or it's three different tokens, each with different properties so on and so mm -hmm. forth so it's a completely customizable blockchain that's built on the steam blockchain it's like a sub chain on on the steam blockchain right and you mm -hmm. as the person who's establishing it gets to set up how it's produced and how it's set up and then it becomes so it's a like a crypto in a box yeah exactly that's a, it's exactly what it is well have you have you seen skycoin i know i've talked about it i, I can't remember if i talked about it with you but like uh it's no i basically have not. It's insane. It's it's a, a cryptocurrency, uh, the, a blockchain, a uh, social media, uh, a, a messaging, a, D, a distributed DNS, and uh, a it's got one other feature. Holy but shit! Is there anything all you can't of it do? in one? Basically, 
All you have to do is have it's called Skycoin, and all you have to do is have Skycoin go live, and then side chains go live on side on the side of it for each city and each you know in each you know country in the world. That's, and, that's fucking incredible. And then basically, all you have to do is have it to where there's a decentralized autonomous organization that is allowing exchanges between those localized currencies and the the main Skycoin, and you essentially have Skynet then that can't shut be shut down. Well, yeah, and that's and that's the beauty about SMTs is because they all function on the Steam chain, on the Steam blockchain. Anywhere you can trade Steam, uh, you can trade all of these SMTs. And since there aren't any transaction mm -hmm. fees to go from an SMT to Steam, you're solid. You don't have to pay anything to switch things back and forth. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've, I'll I'll look into Skycoin because that sounds like insane. That's way more capability it's than. Steam it's is one of the ones of, that has wrong, excited but... me the most. That that coin and Expanse are the two that have excited me the most uh, since cryptos have came out. I, Expanse why aren't you excited is about um, Steam, Dave. Why aren't you excited about Steam? I still don't know that much. I don't about like Expanse. Reddit. I only bought I only bought some on a flyer when I during a conversation with you when you told me you were trying to, you were you were buying some and I'm like, ah, I'll throw a little money at it, see what happens. And that it's actually, it's that, panned that was, out so far. It, it went over for, yeah, that one. You know, I bought it. It was you know a couple of weeks ago, or a month ago, whatever. Well, well yeah. Whenever, however long you've been waiting for yours, that's when I bought mine because I bought mine the same day. It did not have the problems that you did. However, I either want my expanse coins or my Bitcoin back. Changely, damn it. <laughs> yeah, my 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 experiences with Changely were not exactly positive. Although I did get my expanse right away, so it was not it was not a problem. I think it took like I had mine in like it, either way to to not bury the lead and not not to kill Nick out of this show. Ex do you know what uh uh Ex uh, Ethereum is um, yeah Nick? yeah okay well Expanse is essentially decentralizing uh, that <laughs> okay interesting they're they're cool. fixing what you know the Dow whatever his name is is, the, is oh yeah they're fixing what he's messed up yeah I, I got out of Ethereum because so, expect a Ethereum expanse flip flop is what I'm saying like the the people that are excited about Ethereum are going to be excited about expanse I don't know, for the same reasons. that's 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 a pretty bold yeah. claim maybe it, maybe is, maybe I was not. gonna say is it, is it maybe maybe not Ethereum's up around 800 currently. from what I've read people are saying that so I don't know well again like I said I, I never bothered to learn about it I just threw some money at it because you were like because you said that you were getting it I was like ah, I'll take a I ride did the with same you. with Pivx you said hey I'm buying Pivx I bought some so this worked out yeah, <laughs> like I said, it, I, you know, it was three bucks when I bought it. It's that it hit, it hit over eleven. Yeah, it was three when I got it, so it's at eleven. Yeah, I've been watching. So. Ugh. But anyway, and you, yeah. you know, it sucks is you try to tell your your parents, Nick. Have you tried to tell anybody? Hey, you should be investing like ten to five percent of everything you got into Bitcoin or yeah. whatever you can, My and they're just has. like, you're a crazy person. No, yeah, nobody's yeah, told me I'm crazy right now. Recently, I, like people were kind of like when I, because like, I've known about the cryptocurrency for a while. People at first were like, eh, "What are you talking about?" But yeah. my dad is uh, <laughs> people I know have um, invested in, and they're pretty happy. Um, and uh, it wasn't even for me, really, like saying, "Hey, you should do it." It was um, one of my buddies just heard about Litecoin and and uh, and Bitcoin, and he's like, "Well, shoot, I can't really buy much Bitcoin." Um, but let me throw in some Litecoin, and he uh, he made uh, some good money. So he's happy with it. Yeah. And, uh, there's a lot of people who I know who are who are definitely um, taking that approach of of putting five to ten percent in. I'm I'm about there. I, I might be more than that. I'm probably more than that in crypto. I mean, I I know companies that are doing that now that are investing five to ten percent of of stuff into crypto. Just to diversify their otherwise stock portfolios or, or real estate portfolios. Yeah, it's really smart. So, so I mean, it it is just having a tangible asset that you could. Let's say I need to buy, I need to pack up, or I need to send a salesman to you know Switzerland for the weekend. You then could transfer him that much Bitcoin he's going to need, or you know, when Ripple starts working, you'll just be able to boom, 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 get your Swiss. Swedish currency that you need there and it's done. So everything's going to be quick, quick, quick cha changing money uh, soon. And and that's the really yeah. beautiful part about this. Like, you know, everybody hears about Bitcoin, but there's 
thousands of altcoins. Well, there's more than a thousand different altcoins out there, and they each have their own particular use, uses and how useful they and are. And this is just the but tip of the it, iceberg, too. I, I know. It's incredible. It's like, what an age to be alive. You know, we're, like, we're living through the decentralization of legal tender of money, and it's incredible. Yes. And they can't do anything about it. You know, we always talk about this as if it's a good thing for us, right? But we never talk about the negatives that Bitcoin's going to bring. And we're never going to think about or be able to figure out until it happens what's going to happen when there's a mass panic to Bitcoin. And the banks are like, and no one can transfer their money out. Well, they're going to they're gonna try to get people either way, man. You know, I mean, as it is. It's all about that Fed coin, bros. It's all about the <laughs> Fed coin. Oh, they're going to have a Fed coin. Believe that. It's, well, cool. Of course. Of course. Of course they are. Other countries are already doing it. The Federal that. Reserve's already talking about it. They've been talking about it. Yeah. By 2018, they've been talking about it. Oh, we shall see. Ugh. On that note, we probably should. Don't take the microchip, folks. Don't do it. <laughs> Good advice. Uh, we probably should get wrapping the show up, though. Uh, though. Uh, so, Nick, first of all, thank you uh, for joining us tonight, man. This was uh, fun. Sorry that we cut you out of the last half of the conversation. Hey, <laughs> no tends, worries. That tends to happen. But uh, p- please, before we go, uh, anything you want, want to add, anything you want to promote, anything like that? Um, yeah, yours. I guess I'll, I'll plug my website. But yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I just yeah, I don't I don't know much about crypto, but I uh, I learned something. I learned a little bit more about Steemit and uh, and uh, some other stuff. So I appreciate it. It was fun to listen to. And uh, yeah, you can check out my work. Um, I'm on iTunes and Stitcher with uh, Yakin with Nick. That's Y A K K I N with Nick. And uh, if you look up, I think you can find the the anarcho uh website pretty close or pretty quickly if you type in Nick Hazelton. I am the most famous Nick Hazelton on the internet, <laughs> um, so you can you can find my my work Huzzah. there. And, and if if you can't find Yakin with Nick, just type in Nick Hazelton. That's H A Z E L T O N, and you'll find my stuff. And um, you can occasionally find me on the Freedom Fiends. I was on last night, Freedom Fiends. Uh, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. Fox, Freedom Fox Trot Echo Echo November <laughs> Sierra. Is that what it is? That's what it is. Yeah, yeah you can, at dot com. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm at. And Hazelton Farm. Sorry, I forgot about that. That's my that's my uh, farm. Uh, there's not much there, but uh, if you're in local in Oregon or if you're coming through, get some yak burger. Um, Hazeltonfarms.com. dot com. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Gonna have to make. A, I'm gonna have to make a point to head over there so I can have a yak burger. I, I definitely want to try a yak burger, but damn it, send me some. I, I I heard you finally setting out jerky. I want some damn jerky, man. I've been asking for this for two <laughs> fucking right. years. Send Ooh, me some fucking jerky. Yeah. <laughs> trade, I'll trade you jerky for X. I mean, for uh, what do you want, Litecoin? <laughs> oh, I would do that. I'll. Uh, yeah, I'll I've pay, been, I'll I need to make crypto. some jerky here. I uh, I I really like. I I I think it's a great idea, and I want to do it specifically because I can get crypto from anarchists who want to buy jerky from me. Um, Hell yeah! And I need to make it. I. Uh, Gosh, man, I have a, all I have right now is meat that is, and that's where just, jerky for crypto.com was made. <laughs> <laughs> it's, man, it's a thing. It's awesome. Um, but, uh, I've got a bunch of, I've got roasts and, uh, steak cuts that aren't that great that I'm going to turn into jerky and I just need to get on it. So, uh, I'll do that well, by the, nice. like, uh, get in contact list. with me on Facebook or something and, <laughs> and, uh, we'll work it out. Excellent. Excellent. All right, uh, Andre, Dave, anything before we go? Nope. Um, the only oh thing wait, there's one thing. There's one thing I, I wanted to mention. There's one thing I wanted to mention because I recently went on a uh, vacation to meet up with my girlfriend Chelsea up in Canada and Alberta, and we went to a comedy show with her friends that was hosted in a casino. I saw a Vlad the Impaler slot machine. <laughs> yeah. That's not related to anything. I just wanted to share that with you because that blew my fucking mind. That just blew my mind. I had a picture of him and everything, and it was a slot machine. It was a video I'm, slot machine. I'm surprised they let a war machine like yourself into Canada, man, with all those little, you know, those guys over there. You know, they 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 frighten easy. <laughs> well, apparently Alberta is full of assholes, so I, who knows? Maybe Seriously. they just didn't give a shit. Oh. Anyway, that was my, that was my I, I two have, cents. I just wanted to put that in there. Go I have ahead, nothing Dave. new to report. I have right. nothing new to report. Keep going, fellow friends. Keep telling everyone you know that taxation is theft and that we can form a consensual society based on contracts and, you know, property and, you know, the non-aggression principle. And that's basically it. That's the whole, uh, that's all I got to say. 
Can't spell consensual without sensual. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Well, so thank you everybody for listening. Uh, thank you guys for the conversation. Uh, all of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. Patreon is still up and running. Thank you for everybody who continues to, to donate. I think we just got a new... I forgot to look it up before the show, and I probably should have. But we did get we did get a new patron this week, and uh, I will reveal that name next week <laughs> when I remember to look it up ahead of time. Uh, but thank you very much. Go read for, us on iTunes as well, guys, yes. and Stitcher. Yes, exactly. I was going to get to that. Thank you, Dave. That's uh, one thing we keep forgetting oh, to mention. Uh, you know, because we've we've said the whole time we've done the done the show. I mean, if you want to donate to us, great. If you want to join our Patreon, great. But the the one thing you could always do for us is just you know like comment and share our stuff. And especially the one thing we always seem to neglect is uh, if you do listen to us on iTunes or Stitcher or any of those things, wherever you can leave a review for us, please do consider doing so. And hopefully it's a positive one. <laughs> uh, even if you know little criticism isn't bad. Dave and I have talk, we're talking about this recently. You know, criticism is good if it's you know in a put in a you know doesn't have to be a nice way, but not, you know, don't be an asshole about it. <laughs> but if you have some criticism, let us know. Um, but otherwise, uh, again, thank you everybody who continues to donate to the Patreon. Uh, I know this is going to come out on Christmas uh, or the day after, but when, uh, when you do listen to this still, you know, even after your holidays are over, please continue, uh, consider continuing to use our Amazon link for uh, all your Amazon purchases. Because again, if you, if you want to donate to us, that's the easiest way to do so. Because it doesn't cost you anything. All right. So this has been the season. Have a Merry Yakmas, everyone. <laughs> Merry Yakmas. <laughs> Good. And there's our title of the show. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, again for listening. This has been the Season of Liberty podcast, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace in the Middle East. Peace, easy scrubs. <laughs>